Hello. Uh, so this was uh, tweeted by Prashant like today morning. Uh, lovely commentary illustrating norms, values, and issues of power or trash that guide attitudes and behaviors in health systems. So basically, there's a commentary that has been made on how to work with the health system and uh, i've opened that article here we'll read that today uh, it's a rather long article with a few tables and boxes and all that i haven't read it in fact uh, i mean i did open it in my phone but i thought i'll read with everyone so this is the first time i'm reading this and uh, i'm recording as we are reading it so it says how to work with intangible software in public health systems some experiences from india so to my software friends uh, this is not a software related article it's it's about public health people and systems so nevertheless uh, it's in health research policy and systems um, journal um, i i know raghal here and uh, I think I've heard this name Deepika uh, Vijay Sri Alapa for sure. So, uh, so these are people who have a great deal of experience working with the health system in uh, India. So, let's go to the article abstract. This commentary focuses on intangible software defined as the range of ideas, norms, values and issues of power or trust that affect the performance of health systems so that's what software is ideas norms values and issues of power or trust that affect the performance of health systems so it's like um it's like an operating system right uh, if there are certain ideas and norms within the architecture of the operating system that uh, that in turn either prevents uh, certain kind of things from happening or you know enables facilitates certain kind of things happening so like windows has um, the idea that users are not uh, very smart and that uh, things should be able to run on its own so when you double click on a, a recently inserted usb drive it, it uh, Windows has this ability to automatically run an exe, an executable from within it. So that's how a lot of viruses spread in Windows. But on the other hand, uh, Linux family of operating systems typically do not have that ability of automatically executing a newly inserted USB drive. So that comes from the idea or norm or value that users are not you know idiots in uh, in the linux family side but on the other side windows uh, considers users as uh, not very um, power users so basically uh, similar to that that's why probably the word software fits well very well here the the ideas that percolate our systems also affect the performance of health systems so anyhow uh, i'm not gonna read a lot uh, by myself let's uh, hear from the authors well the need to work with intangible software within health systems is increasingly being recognized the practical hows of doing so have been given less attention that's true um uh, let me just turn on turn out this stuff okay um In this commentary, we, a team of researchers and implementers from India, have tried to deliberate on these hows through a practice lens. We engage with four questions of current relevance to intangible software in the field of health policy and systems research. One, is it possible to rewire intangible software in health systems? Two, what approaches have been attempted in the Indian public health system to rewire intangibles? So basically, is, is a culture change possible? Is it possible to um, you know, remove some hierarchies and make things uh, more um, people friendly, I suppose all of those things. And then three, have such approaches been evaluated 
and what practical lessons can we offer from our experience of rewiring intangible from our perspective approaches to rewiring intangible software recognizing recognize that people in health systems are capable of visioning thinking adapting and leading change so this i think is perhaps the most critical um, assumption that the authors are making and which we should also learn from them that we should not um, you know discard or discredit people in health systems as incapable of all of these visioning thinking adapting and leading uh, we should think of them as human beings who can do all of these like any other human being given the opportunity so these approaches attempt to challenge the often unchallenged power hierarchies in health systems by allowing people to engage deeply with widely accepted norms and routinized actions in this commentary we have reported on such approaches from india under six categories so basically i think um, when this sentence comes in i'm thinking that uh, this article is more about not so higher ups in the health system but some people who may be at say district level or sub district level or you know a primary health center medical officer kind of person because uh, they are talking about attempt to challenge the power hierarchies in health systems and then that allowing people to engage deeply with norms and actions so uh, the power hierarchies matter for people at the middle rung of the ladder so i mean it it affects everyone but nevertheless um, uh, in this commentary we have reported such approaches from india under six categories approaches intended to enable visioning and leading approaches targeted at engaging with evidence data approaches intended to help health workers navigate contextual complexities approaches intended to build the cultural competence approaches that recognize and reward performance and approaches that are targeted at enabling collaborative work and breaking power hierarchy so again uh, it looks like it's for uh, people who are relatively closer to work than um, others but uh, anyhow so mostly frontline workers i think no uh, the, the, i mean the, that that the large majority of our public health system is by the frontline workers and uh, uh, it's very important that uh, that is the software which uh, is rewired so our collective experience suggests that intangible software innovations work best when they are co-designed with various stakeholders are contextually adapted in an iterative manner and are implemented in conjunction with structural improvements also such interventions require long term investments based on our experiences we highlight the need for following fostering more dialogue in this category of interventions among all stakeholders for cross learning evaluating and publishing evidence on such interventions in non conventional ways with a focus on participatory learning interesting um, i think uh, this might be a good article to discuss in our primary healthcare leadership fellowship um, uh, anyhow building ecosystems that allow exponential learnings on such interventions to be shared experiential sorry experiential learnings on such interventions ecosystems okay <laughs> mm. i have a comment which i reserve on building ecosystems uh, these tend to become software ecosystems platforms these days but uh, we'll talk about that later uh, peer review reports okay this peer review and all let's just uh, look at what that is aha uh, original submission was in 22 december 2021 and then three two people reviewed and one uh, author commented there was a revision accepted so let's read what the revision was um uh, some experiences okay uh, these are emails are all public so i don't know uh warm greetings thank you for facilitating the review of your commentary we are left 
left justified the paper what is left justified i think it's for formatting suggestion nevertheless we have better linked in table one with commentary write up added a few sentences on the theoretical underpinnings now in the revised paper that are engaging in guiding course uh, team of authors what is happening <laughs> yeah reviewer one the formatting is mixed left <laughs> i i don't think the reviewers should care about all of this anyhow uh Due to its unusual format, I struggled a bit through a lot of interesting information present in table 1. So we have to table 1. Uh, 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 such cross case analysis could benefit from a bit more transparency. Now how the lessons learned were derived from the practical experiences. It's a commentary, therefore, does not contain a method section. Uh, we are going to try to add some connecting references or link table 1 better with help. Okay. So basically, um, review comments were not really useful, I guess. <laughs> um, okay, the field of health policy and systems research emphasizes thinking of health systems as complex and adaptive entities that are shaped by human agency and action. Um, health systems are complex adaptive entities that are shaped by human agency and action. Yeah. So basically, the, they are saying, don't don't call system as system like something that won't change but call it as systems with many complex and adaptive entities which are all human you know human driven seen through this lens the capacities within a health system can be examined in terms of its hardware which is human resource infrastructure financial inputs, and tangible software regulations formal processes technical capacities uh, as well as intangible software okay so this tangible software which is like written down rules uh, you know or say let's say a plc has the the medical officer is an mbbs candidate or a, a doctor from ayurveda or bams background um there, there there is a technical capacity that uh, we can expect from them based on the syllabus of these courses but if that uh, um, PhD has a post for a MD family medicine person let's say um, based on the syllabus of MD family medicine and if taught correctly their technical capacity is going to be uh, different so that that's the kind of uh, you know tangible because it's uh, we can derive it from uh, paper but also intangible things which are you know values norms attitudes relations which we cannot read from paper but we have to read from people so all these three becomes parts of a whole c figure one so hardware software intangible or social political environment context so this affects uh, intangible software I mean, it affects everything, but basically, I think it's part of intangible software. Mm -hmm. Now, HPS lens not only acknowledges the myriad interdependencies among these three components, but also emphasizes their embeddedness in diverse social and political contexts. Okay. Uh, this commentary focuses on intangible software defined as the range of ideas, norms, values. Okay, uh, is this still the abstract or uh, I think uh, this is the introduction or uh, we've started the article now. So we are just repeating uh, what is intangible software. The need to explicitly work with intangible elements has gained increased attention. Indeed, recent empirical studies in many different low and middle income countries have highlighted how perverse intangible software including the de demotivation of staff, lack of support and leadership, risk governance and hesitancy to implement new policies undermines various system improvements. Correct. So, further evidence suggests when software elements are positively oriented, for example, in health safety where trusting collaborative relationships exist, 
the performance of health workers as well as called care provided by them tends to be better this is true i don't need references for that despite an increasing recognition of the need to work with intangible software in health systems a more practical house of doing so have been less clear some have argued that system reform efforts must begin with intangibles since changes in health systems and policies are at the very core determined by underlying values and ideas that shape the behaviors of people that's very interesting others have contended that health policies and programs must acknowledge and work with intangible within more widely scope system strengthening efforts uh, that's a very pragmatic diplomatic position in general however there has been limited discussion of what approaches can be practically taken to rewire intangible in health systems that's true and that's why they are called intangibles if you if you you know wrote about them then wouldn't be intangible anymore it would be tangible anyhow when we started working on this commentary we found that very few papers could give us practical solutions this in an attempt to engage with intangibles through a practical lens a team of indian colleagues mixed hats have compiled the various approaches to working with rewiring elements that we have come across in the course of our work drawing our joint exponential knowledge with support from literature we have tried to four guiding answer four guiding questions is it possible to rewire intangible what approaches uh, the same questions that have been uh, presented in the abstract our engagement with these guiding questions come from practice rather than theory and is intended as a starting point to deeper empirical and theoretical work we have discussed our thoughts on each of the questions below Okay, so now I think there will be four sections of this paper. One will be, is it possible to rewire intangible software? I think this has to be yes, because otherwise the whole article doesn't make any sense. So nevertheless, we'll read. In practice settings, we have often observed the perverse intangibles within health systems are considered as either unmodifiable or as too difficult to change. Yeah, that's what happens to uh, people who want too big of a change in too quick a time or uh, without spending too much effort uh, um, or have too big ideas in other words, uh, very few initiatives to re rewrite intangibles have been tried and even fewer have been documented hence we have tried to make a case below as to why we consider intangibles to be amenable to change from our perspective approaches to see um, this is a bit uh, uh, <laughs> disagreeable uh, very few initiatives to rewire intangibles have been tried. See, when you are trying to rewire intangibles, you can't write about it or you can't document it because they are intangibles. Like you can't, you know, go to a place and say, I'm going to change your culture. I'm going to rewire your intangibles. And then, you know, write about, I, okay, I rewired the intangibles here. I mean, I don't think it works that way maybe that's why they have not been documented as much but um, it makes sense uh, uh, this is not false this is correct um, it's just a bit uh, unfair from our perspective uh, approaches to reviewing intangible software organize and celebrate the human element in health systems. We see these approaches as being derived from an actor centric philosophy that recognizes that people working in health systems are not automatons who carry out tasks mechanically. Rather, they are individuals with agency who are capable of self mastery, learning, visioning, collaborating, and adapting and leading change. The actions and decisions of people are underpinned by the life worlds and lived realities, which can be understood and reoriented in favor of broader health system goals. From this standpoint, it is possible to work with intangibles in order to improve performance and practice and strengthen health systems overall. Also, since individuals in the health system are embedded within formal and informed power hierarchies, working with intangibles is almost always an exercise in challenging existing power relationship. Absolutely, this paragraph is spot on. These are documented examples across, there are documented examples across LMICs that highlight working with intangibles is possible. In Kenya, South Africa, uh, where there is attempts to systemize this process of reflection and sense making within health system through research partnership, there have been promising, have shown promise in nothing positive. From Guatemala, one study documents systemic changes achieved through a humanized version of supportive supervision to community health workers. India, the EGJUT trial based on participatory learning and action techniques has demonstrated how such techniques can enhance community relationships with health systems. Uh, 
ओके एकजुट एकजुट इज द वन इन ओरिसा आई थिंक लेट्स जस्ट मेक श्योर दैट इज दैट एकजुट इंडिया एकजुट ओ दे आर इन ओडिशा राजस्थान मध्य प्रदेश झारखंड वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग स्वाति to enable the rewiring of perverse software in the public health system we have compiled the interventions into six inductively derived categories described in box 1 okay this is that box okay this is only categories approaches in order to okay this is what they mentioned in the abstract enabling visioning uh making themselves leaders some of systematic lambert routine scripts and practices that can change yeah this is what we do in our leadership fellowship um approach is targeted at engaging with evidence better now okay a bit of this too approach is intended to one saint then as fillers of forms and that they are given up and they live, they have the capacity to critically engage with evidence and think of locally relevant solutions that's true a help health workers navigate contextual complexities day to day context are complex and there is need to support them rather than blaming them for non achievement oh man i wish i could share the recording of the last session in the leadership fellowship where uh, the medical officers were talking about how they were given targets for covid uh, vaccinations and uh, uh, i mean some of the targets are strict Uh, purely unreachable or in unreasonable uh, and then they talked about targets in other vertical programs like malaria like there are areas with no malaria and uh, they are supposed to identify and diagnose x number of malaria cases so some of these targets are meaningless and uh, not at all contextual so they were talking about uh, how um they navigate those complexities i mean actually lot of this actually came out uh, in that session the recording is private so i can't share uh, now the next was in to build the culture competence of health workers and enhance community relationship sensitizing health workers to needs of community providing better social culture and orientation plus a recognized reward performance uh okay these are also not meant to be for achievement of numerical targets approaches targeted enabling collaborative work and breaking power and gender hierarchies nice nice categorization in table 1 we present indian examples of approaches described in box 1 okay this is the table 1 we have included interventions that attempted both manager level and on the front lines of problems so only if this have been formal document kind of interventions we have compiled here aimed at first order cultural change that is they were about enabling people in the system to do similar activities that they had been doing all along but this slight twist or a difference okay let's see where table 1 is okay table 1 is uh, in three mm. so i think this is probably one very important table so we'll go through it very carefully approaches to enable visioning and leading no one wants to feel like their job is meaningless informal gatherings and discussions to understand or our king policy visions and values mm. when a community monitoring intervention is initiated by sochara interesting this video is going to some sochara friends right after <laughs> recording uh, in tamil nadu frontline workers were worried that this monitoring process would be used to unfairly accuse them of faults that they believe to be systemic correct since workers are unwilling to cooperate 
However, rather than start with an attitude of confrontation, the staff spent informally talking to health workers about notions of accountability and helping them understand why coming to monitoring process had value and meaning. The informal discussions helped the health workers to accept the intervention. Interesting. Uh, high level support from state authorities are needed. Not all people are willing to collaborate despite exchange of government. It was found that in some geographical, some people are more willing and these pockets could be used to demonstrate to others who were hesitant the usefulness and value of this community monitoring process. Hmm. Here we start seeing the tensions between, um, you know, assuming that uh, everyone is interested in envisioning leading adapting and all of that and um, possible corruption and uh, you, know, you know what they typically call system <laughs> issues so um, uh, so i mean i i do not believe that just informally talking is uh, uh, is good enough to bring a lot of change either uh, the informal talking made uh, the people kind of comfortable with the staff such that it started to feel like they were cooperating or uh, i don't know they were already willing to uh, lead and change it's just uh, they were uh, they were skeptical of this stuff at uh, soldier so I don't think people would have changed uh, uh, their approach about community monitoring uh, just because they had informal uh, talking. Anyhow, um, uh, let's go to the next one. Leadership trainings and non-clinical capacity building initiatives. The Institute of Public Health has conducted district level training program. So, <laughs> This is all friends talking in this article. Huh? The Institute of Public Health has conducted district level training programs to build champions and leaders in Karnataka. There were reports of initial resistance to training as there was a belief among health workers that they were being tested. Hence, prior to the training, an extended rapper building phase was necessary. A detailed relation to training program has been published. Again, uh, this sounds like an informal um, discussion, but uh, uh, I think, yeah, see, uh, maybe uh, I was a bit wrong to judge this informal discussion. What is actually happening here also is this rapport building. And this rapport building kind of makes makes it clear to the people uh, at the front end, uh, at the receiving end, that these people are different. These people are not here to uh, criticize people or to find fault and all of that but that they genuinely want to engage. So maybe they, it decreases the skepticism and brings down the differences and that's how the, uh, the resistance decreases. Okay, so a detailed evaluation of that, evaluation of capacity building program and contextualized theoretical framework. Hmm, I think this is from Prashant's PhD or something. There were anecdotes regarding resistance from public sector staff to being trained as some of them felt that they were being tested, it took some time Evaluation for the response. Okay. It is one champion who can nurture others. Exposure of staff to inspirational excellence. An ex medical officer from a primary health center shared that in the state she hailed from, new recruits were exposed to exemplars or positive deviance in the public health system. Uh, this was done as part of the induction training and aimed to provide new recruits with good role models to look up and in the long term potentially add the okay, giving examples. People learn both. Uh, thus, the challenge must be carefully chosen basic infrastructure support hmm. i think uh, this uh, <clears throat> section <laughs> could have had more examples related to uh, decentralization uh, and uh, uh, work with uh, ngos work with there are many medical officers who have uh, at least uh, or uh, health um uh, administrators who have worked locally with uh, ngos with uh, organizations with people with vision uh, and leading maybe they are not documented okay i won't criticize the others because if they're not documented 
they can't include. Approaches targeted at engaging with evidence better, helping routine data to speak differently through eye opening data workshops. NHSRC conducted health inequity related data. These workshops gave people an opportunity to look at routine data through different lights. Boring routine data became a process of reflection. That's interesting. In some of the district pockets, the officials had attempted to recognize inequities and reach the more vulnerable in their program in practical ways. Mm. Reinforcement of achievements locally using local data. Facility level data was used to engage in discussion with nurses and they reflected on their local achievements. The self recognition of positive achievements seemed to play an important role in local work. Okay. Approaches targeted navigating complexities in the context, but these systems. Pair young recruits with champions who serve as mentors. Mm, but this across standard is also useful. Putting people in a safe space outside of work. Informal reflective spaces. And bodies across sectors in order to break the resistance of people as regards. Space for reflection and bonding away from work. No targets. Mm -hmm. Present need to build cultural competence of health workers and to enhance community relationships. Mm, common understandings. Exit trial on PLA. Uh, Ashas and the Minister group over 13 months. Participatory and changes time consuming. How to talk to community trainings. Explicit soft skills and communication trainings. Sehat led the training intention. Uh, by code signing the intention stakeholders, code designing, <laughs> not code signing. Um, incorporate mixed cadre uh, training session by including explicit soft skill communication skills as part of training. This training worked towards tweaking the culture within health facilities to be more sensitive to domestic violence issues. Okay, I'm clearly facing out on this article right now uh, because. Uh, it's describing so many activities but uh, okay maybe i'm looking at this power gender hierarchies as the biggest issue in my mind and uh, i'm seeing that all of these other five categories of work are kind of useless without breaking power hierarchies um so Including recognizing rewarding performance of Kaya Kalpaski. Okay, so how do they break power hierarchies? Building confidence training on soft skills, public speaking, and basic health services offered nurses, formal leadership at positions, primary care clinics, organizing notice and nurses are culturally hesitant about taking up leadership positions. Seeing a hybrid technical and soft skills module, they build their rigor and confidence. Learning to speak English helped to boost nurses' confidence. Um, leadership works must be seen as important step in trying to make on fire hierarchies. Okay, so I think uh, uh, okay, let me read this last one. Sensitizing workshop within the health system. This was group for education advocacy for community health reach. Uh, to adopt a gender lens to TV as part of this work, gender responsive. Ah, uh, basis need to make strong case for gender responsiveness before. See, uh, I I will kind of tell a controversial point. I might change this one later, but I think the authors have um, gone back from their belief. Okay, maybe maybe not. Um, they think that uh, people at the front line are willing to change if uh, they are given trainings on such change. I think, in a sense, see what I'm trying to say is they said here in the abstract, also, they said here in the abstract that 
uh, is it possible to rewire uh, huh. so this sentence no this approach is attempt to challenge the often unchallenged power hierarchies by allowing people to engage deeply with i don't see a lot of this unchallenged power hierarchies in health systems being disturbed by the interventions that are being mentioned here although um, and uh, the second point i was trying to say was um, in rather than individuals the nc who are people of self so this again the authors are stating that these these are individuals with agency who are capable okay they've used the word capable so what they're essentially and i mean reading this capable and this set of interventions together what i feel is that the authors are saying these people are capable if given the right kind of trainings and uh, examples and um you know ability to uh, or trainings to engage with evidence and support for navigating complexities and all that if given all these things then they are able to they can be uh they can become capable of self mastery learning machine collaborating and adapting uh, something like that uh, i think so um individual citizens but i think i mean if at all i have to uh i will nevertheless say it now i might change this again later i think all of these are meaningless without uh, all of this uh, capability of being a full blown human being is meaningless without uh, the ability to address unchallenged power hierarchies i mean i'm using the words that the authors themselves chose and about those power hierarchies there is um very little that uh, seems to be documented mm. now this let's go down um see even with this example no even with bhs ka example uh the power hierarchy is broken not by nurses learning english it was broken because uh this primary care clinics themselves uh are you know set up in a way where there is no power hierarchy i mean nurses learned english so they became more confident that's fine what i'm saying is if you go to government phc and train the nurses in english that that might help with the power hierarchy a bit but it's not going to you know drastically alter the power hierarchies there until and unless the intangible software of the um, medico centric power hierarchies in primary health centers are uh, disturbed by something else so those kinds of um, uh, challenging power was what i was thinking i would uh, see in this article maybe uh, we don't do a lot so we will have to do something nevertheless um where is ha huh. now have interventions or rewiring been evaluated and proven worthy of pragmatic investment uh, these entities have often expressed justifiable worries about lack of concrete proof that such interventions are worthy of investment there is slowly growing body of evidence from different lmics that point towards promise of this rewiring uh in kenya and south africa they have found the potential to improve social and emotional skills and to stimulate learning process and better relationship health workers for change approach which is series of participatory workshops has shown positive changes how to do workshop in some places but not all this is the who one uh uh maybe not tanzania yeah i think this is the who one there is a who video recently about health workers changing no this some interventions like supportive supervision appreciative inquiry in systems and pla have also been tried and declared as promising example 8 what was example 8 uh exu trial um uh, with women's group 
the intervention is to participatory approaches to build cultural competence and purpose <clears throat> Ah, uh, okay. Mm, I have some thoughts coming up in my mind, but I won't talk about it now. Mm. Okay, so, um, however, cons conventional proof of concept that is evidence through conventional experiment methods where one can attribute change in coming flow outcomes, but also may not always exist for the intentions described in this note. See, Let's look at this uh, example eight, okay. People and system need to understand each other. Actual trial on PLA took place in Jharkhand and Orissa. In this intervention, um, ASHA's facilitated uh, meetings with women's groups over 31 months. Let's just read that, okay. What, uh, I don't know how to get it. Let's hope that it is in a... Okay, it's in BMC itself, open access. So, uh, background, uh, impact of community mobilization with women's group is the way ashes. Now, how was this impact? We identified villages. So, the, it was researchers identifying villages uh, and uh, See, uh, the team also prioritized materials to be used by selecting the most important maternal and newborn problems with ASHAs uh, uh, and help identify. So the question is, who is training all these ASHAs? Like ASHAs, uh, in a face group, so to hold a comic meeting. See, ASHA selection, training and incentivization. See, this is what I'm talking about. So now if you have a power structure wherein um, you bring the ASHAs out of the health systems hierarchy by bringing them into this uh, research power hierarchy, then you have of course removed ASHAs from that power hierarchy, the, the original health system power hierarchy, right? Now within the research, they have different power. Now they are given trainings, incentives, you know, they have been um, trained, they have all of the uh, support system, everything. And then they are doing some participatory local action. Um, like, how does it change the power hierarchy within the health system? You mean afterwards, once these ashas, once the study is over, they will become um you know continue to do this that's probably true but then how is this a fundable intervention like that's the question they are uh, uh looking at here no well many intervention the government donor agencies uh express as well lack of concrete proofs as a well, worthy of investment now if you want this kind of um, asha led uh, pla to work across india you would have to hire all the i mean you would have to take all the ashas out of that power hierarchy right how do you do that? Like, where do you get enough money to run this program across the country? Like, I don't know if I'm making myself clear, but that's the reason why um, it's so difficult to rewire some of the entire. So, if you have a huge system full of um, wires, intangible software, you can take one small piece of it and uh, 
of course uh, you can re re refactor it and rewire those intangibles but then the question is um, to do this all over the country uh, is this possible Nanta? like <laughs> is it uh, I, I don't like to use the word scale level but that's the basic problem right uh, if if you want societal change of uh, such large uh, impact uh, then you would I don't know uh, maybe it's okay to do all of this uh, I mean it is definitely okay to do all of this we need to have models of how uh, power needs to be power structures need to be broken down but it's also very difficult to do that that's what I was trying to say I mean uh, having done it somewhere is not a um, it's like saying my house uh, is a feminist house like there is no power hierarchy in my house but that took a lot of effort does it mean that uh, and the house next door how do I change that house I mean I have to go there and then change that house then the, the, the go to the next house so uh, okay we'll just continue reading this uh, and keep my comments to myself some interventions like supportive submissions uh, I appreciate inquiry in systems. Uh, see, okay, evidence may not exist, but that's fine. In fact, many of the interventions do not have deconstructed proof for one proof of causal relationship and comment level outcomes are not easy to establish. Um, uh, okay, so we cannot call it success or failure. And impact evaluations may not be able to capture these nuances. That's true. Um, Rewire interventions are complex change mechanisms that uh, needs a realist evaluation framework. <laughs> uh, like Prashant keeps saying, the evaluation huh, realist lens is required. And uh, there will be so many things that, uh, it's the same thing that works in um, one district or one phc in a district may not work in a different phc because of the changes in context uh, you know anything and everything can uh, influence what works and what doesn't work so what they're saying is let's uh, focus on what worked for whom and why um, then saying okay this is how we have to do it that we have to get all ashas to do participatory local action and all of that instead of that um, we have to look at each intervention and see what uh, has been done why it worked why it did not work for whom did it work for whom did it not work and all that uh, so uh, yeah, so we can't just copy, especially when it comes to intangible software. Uh, so rather than just saying, okay, this is the approach and then scaling it across the country, which doesn't work, we will have to be, okay, so maybe now it answers my earlier problem also, like, what we have to learn from all of these examples in table one um, is that uh, there are certain ways of doing it and uh, this is why it works and who what does it work who, who does it work for like it, it only helps us to understand power and power hierarchies all these interventions is not a way to completely change and rewire um, power hierarchies throughout the system um, so it helps us to uh, figure out what the intangible software does and what the intangible software is and how the bug fixes are going to look like but it's not a copy paste the entire thing everywhere kind of solution it it will have to we'll have to learn from all of that and build our intuition to such an extent that at every possible situations we have a uh, potential solution that 
has a high chance of working out for that particular situation so that's the kind of so it, all that essentially says is gain some experience working with people and try to understand how how the intangible software is and then um, um, you know kind of uh, make it make changes so, so this is what uh, this is what leadership in health system is supposed to be doing like what does the ceo of a company do the ceo of a company is supposed to learn from every individual in the company and make changes in the company such that um, you know every uh, problems get sorted out the ceo can't just copy paste random solutions and put it across the company um, and make it work it, it has to be contextualized for each and every um, individual and department and uh, all of that so basically that leadership intelligence is what is um, necessary to make this uh, scale so the question then is who will do all of this like you have learned so much from uh, PLA activity by Egg you have learned by Sochara's activities, IPS activities and all of that. Now, how do we take all the learnings and insights and realist lens from that and put it across the country? Now, for that to happen again, uh, the, the, <laughs> there's another intangible software that needs to be revived, which is in the higher uh, administration, state level or national uh, administration of health systems, I think. Hmm. Another factor is timing. Uh, this is slow change. Uh, we conquer this point. We might be so basically, yeah. I mean, it's very difficult to evaluate such changes. Is what um, it says. What works in practice? Some lessons from our experience. Okay, so um, I think we've been talking too much. This is probably the most uh, important um, section. Some practical tips. Hardware and software go hand in hand. Intangible software inventions are implemented with improvements in hardware and tangible software. Two examples. Authors AU and PB were involved in conducting series of training programs for counselors in public health system on reproductive rights. These trainings emphasize inculcating counseling skills using a rights-based approach rather than coercing women to adopt them. However, it was found that after receiving the training, the trained counselors went to work in a context that was highly target oriented and the counselors felt they had no room to practically apply rights based orientation it happens everywhere uh, you you train someone in something but uh, the context doesn't allow them to do that in addition it was reported that the hospital facility heads use counselors for work other than counseling and counselors felt uncomfortable protection against their diluted counseling roles all this highlights that the usefulness of rewiring software approaches can be diluted if other structural system changes do not accompany this intervention very true which are another learning on same lines from BHS. Um, nurses did not think of themselves as leaders, independent of thinkers. To change these attitudes, NGO offered nurses formal roles that confirm more power to them. Uh, NGOs also had iterated technical conference between training sessions. We note that this combination of structure and soft elements in this invention entwined deliberately had the potential to change the existing shared scope of nurses. See, again, uh, <laughs> this, uh, this they skipped in the table one. They didn't just train them in English and public speaking. They gave them structural power. That's how the power hierarchy got disturbed. Uh, <laughs> uh, how many PhDs can be made, uh, you know, nurse-led? Uh, where, uh, why, are, why do we have medical-led PhDs in our country? Why can't we have nurse-led PhDs? Th those kinds of power structural changes in the power uh, hierarchies of the public health system is required for sure because otherwise it will not work out now who will do all of those changes that's the kind of uh, challenge that uh, uh, rewiring intangible software has to answer mm. Co-designing intervention, intangible software inventions work with complex ideas, ideology, and concepts are not easy to work with. Hence, rewiring interventions can fail. Um, okay, maybe um, uh, again, uh, I'm going. I'm changing my position again. So we don't have to look at this as a 
fixed intervention like we don't have to say every plc has to become nurse led that's how we change power structure what we can uh, learn from this example is that we we might need structural changes also so what what th this section essentially should do is it should give uh, state level or district level or national administrators the courage to attempt such changes and to experiment with such changes if that's the point being made here then it's a completely uh, agreeable point. Code designing interventions, hence revised interventions can fail in the purpose if they are not co designed with relevant stakeholders. One of our authors, Anonymous, spoke of how local health department in the area tried to set up a system where patients could rank a doctor. Uh, the purpose of the intervention was identified and motivated, but however, it was found that doctors tried to rig the voting system as a form of rank. This system is not able to truly identify good doctors through. This experience taught the manager that the reviving interventions need to be tweaked to the context. And one of the ways was to participation of local stockholders. Another example of this kind is not by SA. SA based on experience. Co-designing interventions is not a one. The NGO she worked with had conducted domestic. See, uh, okay. Uh, I'll read this paragraph fully and then I'll make another point. But train, during the train, training facility is a fictitious example of a woman from an ethnic minority to illustrate the answer to all of it. This example was misconstrued. Who took offense against being thought of as all of it? Following this incident, the content of training was revised again to make it more sensitive. The same emphasized that truly co designed university is to try to process the time consumed. That involves immense effort, it should be done right. See, this is the point. See, every intervention, there is nothing called an intervention, there is only an iterative process. And the process will always be guided by. Uh, the values that the authors are identifying in this uh, essentially you know destroying power hierarchies and uh, allowing people to act as leaders adapt to and uh, bring change and all of that so it has to be continuously done in an iterative process and throughout the country like every uh, place has to continuously do this iterative process so if that is to be the case then how can there be interventions like there cannot be interventions there can only be a intangible software installed in the system which does this iterative process continuously right like we can't design interventions we have to uh, change, rewire the system itself uh, so this is such a inception kind of article where the whole uh, process of rewiring the intangibles requires rewiring the intangibles. So it's a <laughs> it's a circular dependency there. Uh, anyhow, um, each place might need a different book, and not everything works everywhere. Not everything works for everyone, and this limitation has to be accepted. This learning can be seen all across almost all knowledge. If we believe that people are unique, we need to enable use of the sense. But at the same time, we need to accept the inherent non uniformity that is bound to suffer. For instance, one of our authors shared the experience of being involved in a national level training workshop. Among the trainees, many did not incorporate new learnings in their practice, but others seriously attempted to change manager practices and demonstrated fantastic work. This evaluation, the evaluation uh, by Prashant also pointed out how each subdivision in district and others, Prashant and others. Wherever I say Prashant, Prashant and team. Um, this should respond differently in a management training program and in order that the response of people in complex systems is not always predictable. Among us, we have noted the need to start with small changes and not be disturbed by an, uh, a tribe of positive change maker needs to be built out time to help start with a few who are more inclined to able to foster change, eventually snowball from there. <clears throat> so uh, I think this is a very uh, very very um, agreeable realistic uh, statement now our paragraph it's about um, how the changing intangible software is hard and uh, it requires um, constant vigilant over time it will change but again there is no guarantee that a tribe of positive change makers will be able to change the system because see when there's a tribe of positive change makers there's also a tribe of negative change makers right so how do we 
uh, this is this is the authors have stated this without um, uh, without any reference. There is no guarantee that the direction of change will always be towards positive. Even if there is a tribe of positive change makers, there is a tribe of negative change makers, and the direction of change can go in any direction. So, uh, so uh, this is just a wishful statement to make here. Um, that it will snowball into larger positive change is a wishful statement. Um, at the same time, um, uh, we have to be wishful because uh, the whole point is if, uh, if the health system has to improve, uh, then see, let's look at this. If, uh, if the prime minister of a country has to announce certain um, Aishman Bharat or uh, national health mission and all of that uh, then uh, it will have I mean they are talking about targets and numbers and all of that so uh, it's a centralized uh, advertisement scheme and therefore uh, it will percolate the same way there is no no um, chance for nuanced and contextual interventions that are being built into the system from the uh, national level so if that's the case, um, it's it's kind of difficult for um, all of um, anyhow. We, we again, I'm being pessimistic here. Uh, let's try to be optimistic and say, okay, uh, documenting perhaps documenting like this article does these ways of changing systems is perhaps a good way to go about um, legitimizing these efforts and making. Uh, a headway into and the others also say that at the very beginning um, uh, our engagement with the guiding questions in this commentary is as a starting point to deeper empirical and theoretical work so I think uh, for this uh, as a starting point this article is doing a brilliant job already uh, let's uh, just finish the article then Nurturing spaces for reflection within existing routines. So um, we need to build spaces for everyday resilience, uh, cognitive, behavioral, and contextual. Many people are good intentioned. Mm. Much of this enthusiasm gets chipped away due to tough work schedule, constraint support, and offering space of reflection can help workers gain renewed vigor and hope. This is absolutely true. Uh, these approaches can be facilitated by external parties. We feel that approaches can also be piggybacked on existing capacity building technical functions. Some training systems on soft skills can be added onto existing new recruit induction trainings. Hmm. Okay, it takes decades of patience, sympathy, and investments. Yeah, uh, intangible software. Indeed, it is easier to change practices through incentives and protocols than to change underlying attitudes, so lasting change come only with attitudinal change. R and AS and reach in particular have noted that the need for empathy along with patients from the experience they observe within the national program, the manager cadres are mostly male and issues of gender very novel. Uh, need for patients for empathy to be involved in change process and they note that change is never uh, what is this? Need for patience and empathy is repeated. Where is the reviewer who said the formatting is a problem? Um, they noted that change is never easy for anyone. They emphasize the need for empathetic discussions. Okay, how many times do you want to say empathy? Along with hard evidence to bring about a slow change. All of us writing this paper have expressed similar sentiments. General concern being that chances of achieving instant results through intangible supplementations are very low. So here's a question then to the authors. Okay, if the chances of achieving instant results in Daniel's software are very low and you are going to wait for 30 years, 40 years, 50 years. Isn't it uh, uh, natural for funders and investors and everyone else to look for uh, other shortcuts? Um, you know, what if we have a system? So I'll just take this hypothetical, okay? Imagine there's one intervention which can totally change the intangibles of the health system drastically over a period of one year. Imagine, um, you know, decentralization of health such that, so right now, imagine, instead of all the health is a state subject, 
it is now being centralized into uh, Ayushman Bharat and all of that. Now that is definitely going to lead to more and more problems because again uh, the priorities will be set in a very centralized way, manner and the context and nuance is lost totally. But let's say just just one intervention of you know destroying Ayushman Bharat as a national program and making it a state level program. That itself will divide, uh, I don't know how many shares we have now, 30, um, we will make it so decentralized compared to one, one, one nation, one program, we will have uh, 30 sub nations and 30 programs, which, which again uh, gives so much of uh, ability for uh, people at the district level. So now the state level people become more empowered right now the people at district level has slightly more power to do even um, um, bigger um, or even a more nuanced way of uh, working so the district level people would be able to talk with the state level people rather easily even without language issues right like there's also the tamil hindi malayalam south indian languages hindi imposition all of that so um, if if Aishwam Bharat is a state state level decentralized program, I bet that has more uh, uh, that will produce so much more instant results than um, um, you know some I, I don't want to use any example from table one, but some program that works in a PHC or a village because you are explicitly addressing the power hierarchy there and from the top so i think um, the authors should have kind of brought in that particular aspect of addressing power hierarchy from the top into this paper it has uh, not been brought in let's see uh, maybe uh, it will come in uh, soon in concluding thoughts complexity theories on systems thinking and Emphasize that bringing about change is a messy, nonlinear, unpredictable process. Despite recognition of complexity in the change process, we feel that in India, like in many other MSCs, most efforts to bring about change continue to focus on tangible aspects. Our collective experience shows that intangible um, are often considered to be risky. Difficulties in measuring impact as well as scarcity of seems to contribute. Not surprisingly, uh, does not appear to favor investments as seek to alternative tangibles. However, examples and um, suggest that it's possible and such interventions work when they're co-designed and contextually adapted uh, it is important to keep in mind how that road to rewiring intangibles in local systems may often be long and iterative um, we need long term more reflective protection and predictable approaches uh, further evidence such interventions may complexity sensitive learning assessments also potential to explore more embedded approaches to researching such inventions wherein the ownership of validation learning rests largely with decision makers and immigrants. Since this commentary is intended as a practice paper, we not focus on theoretical underpinnings of experiential lessons you have shared here. Learnings from our efforts can be linked to perspectives from uh, okay, we are not focusing on theoretical underpinnings. Uh, Learnings also may have to scholarship and organization instrument and for perspective on how individual lines are related to formula and information structures. Uh, okay, some organizational theory here. Um, one, we feel that the routine dialogue among government research and implementers must encompass explicit discussion of intangible elements. Uh, this happens possibly because elements of intangible software are challenging to unpack, potentially sensitive and considered difficult to change as well as generate more funding. And I think uh, this is an absolutely useful uh, way forward because by making the intangible tangible, you are also opening up the way to um, better address those, right? Like uh, in therapy, they say uh, express your feelings, uh, articulate your feelings. So, when the feelings remain unarticulated, they are so, so difficult to address. But when they are articulated, when they are documented, when they are, uh, when the intangibles become tangibles, they are easier to address. That's absolutely true. Second, there is a need to build, develop and publish evidence on working with intangibles. 
implementers often possess deep knowledge and uh, they make multiple structured and non structured items to modify internally. Very true. Uh, this tacit knowledge is often unpublished and remains within specific inventory group. We feel systematic efforts. In fact, uh, if you think about the district administration, state administration, or the national administration with empathy, we can see that they also have all of these uh, observations in their mind. Uh, deep knowledge of intangibles. They, they are not uh, unaware of these. They, uh, uh, they know, uh, so take a district administrator, they, they know how each medical officer in their uh, um, district are behaving. They know their uh, strengths and weaknesses and all of that. Uh, it's just, it's all part of one big power hierarchy, right? Like uh, you can't do a lot um, with that knowledge unless and until you have the ability to do something with that knowledge. So where does that ability come from? from from uh, destroying the power hierarchy so um, i mean outsiders ngos bring uh, with them money through investors and that money enables them to do some amount of disruption of these power hierarchies and that disruption uh, doesn't in my opinion doesn't uh, although it does document how and why these uh, intangible power uh, relationships and values exist. It's, uh, these interventions are useful for that. These interventions do not uh, directly lead to um, systemic change, is my controversial opinion. As do we feel the need for ecosystems, both nationally and across LMIC, in which experiential learnings can be shared, such ecosystems can be built around formal research practice collaborations. Further, informal platforms such as community practice, online knowledge sharing platforms, and other such groups of actors can help to augment evidence generation and advocacy on internet. Again, um, this is such a, um, a generic um, suggestion to make, and I think it actually goes against the spirit of the entire article. The article said how it has to be contextual and uh, um, is so different and depends on each individual and uniqueness and all of that so i mean how do you share uh, i mean of course you can share best practices uh, in a knowledge sharing platform but um, how do you sh how do you talk about the intangibles how do you tell that uh, the district medical officer is an ass in a public platform <laughs> you can't do that right like that is an intangible how how, how do you uh, talk about the health minister being corrupt or uh, the medical officer being uh, um, sexist like you know it's not about building a platform or an ecosystem it's about addressing these power structures hmm i think uh, this is a very thought-provoking article i like this article i'm gonna share this article with a lot of people with this video and uh, mm, I'm hoping that this leads, this article triggers a lot of discussions and action in, in our uh, public health system about uh, uh, all of this uh, correspondence to Sudha Ramani. Okay. okay. So basically, uh, this is open access and creative commons, and therefore, um, I'm putting it in my video because, uh, and uh, here, here is here are all the attributions. Uh, it is written by these these authors and uh, all of that. So thank you. Uh,